So on behalf of the, the TBCAMP uh, consortium, uh, I would like to welcome you to this um, satellite session uh, that is going to be focusing on some exciting results um, uh, on some clinical trials and, and an evaluation of some innovative and new technologies around TB uh, uh, testing and also uh, drug resistance TB uh, detection. Uh, so this is um, uh, done in collaboration with a number of partners and I would like to recognize uh, the STOP TB uh, partnership. And also I want to recognize the USAID and also um, recognize uh, ETCTP uh, for their funding uh, for this uh, very important uh, work uh, that we are going to be uh, discussing uh, today. Uh, so um, to get us started and um, understanding what is going to be happening today, uh, I'm not going to take much of your time. I'm going to invite uh, Margaret uh, to take us through how this session is going to proceed. Otherwise, uh, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, and once again, welcome everyone, both to the people here in the room with us during the annual LabCorp meeting 2022 in the beautiful uh, city of Cape Town, South Africa, but also to the very many uh, participants which are now joining online for this satellite session. So the, as we all know, the COVID-19 pandemic has had a devastating impact on the fight against TB. According to the 2021 Global TB Report, Highlights has been put on the setback of on progress achieved towards reaching and achieving the targets of the NTB strategy. With a reduction of 18% in TB case notification, reflecting the drop in access to TB diagnostic and care services. This highlights also the need to keep pushing to increase access, close the gap and provide access to adequate therapy in line with the motto of the TBCAP consortium. Tonight, we will be discussing how we can fast track implementation of research finding into implementation and rollout at country level. This way we aim to achieve scale up of access to point of care and near point of care diagnostic solution for both TB and drug sensitive TB at all tier of the diagnostic network. Can I have next slide, please? Thank you. So the run of the show tonight will be as follows. So in the first part, the first topic will really focus on the main activity and the presentation of the TBCAP consortium, who's really hosting us tonight here. So I'm speaking on their behalf as ASLM is also part of the consortium. So we will have presentation from the representative of the consortium lead, Dr. Vince Glux. I hope I pronounce well, <laughs> I tried my best, who is representing FIDE, the consortium lead. And we will be also privileged to be presented with some early results with uh, Dr. Chad Sentner from the University of Cape Town, who will uh, provide us with some information about the XDRTB cartridge implementation trial. In the second part of the, of the meeting, we will be also lucky to get really insight from the countries who were candidate for the uh, early implementation of the TrueNAT platform. So this is a molecular testing platform. You will have a lot of information on it. And this rollout has taken place as part of the Stop TB Partnership and USAID uh, new tool, uh, access to new tool project. And so we will have presentation from uh, Nigeria, from Zimbabwe, from Kenya and also from DRC. Uh, an introduction to the meeting will be done to the second part by a representative of the Stop TB Partnership, which is Dr. Lucy Fumbi. And then we will have a presentation by Nigeria, by the head of the TB program, and also the implementing partners who will be uh, sitting here with us or remotely attending. Uh, and then in the second part, we will have a presentation from Zimbabwe, uh, which will be uh, presented by uh, the head of the National TB Laboratory Services Coordinator. 
and uh, in, in company of the implementing partner, the IDDS. So they will each introduce themselves in turn when they take the stage. We will move on also to DRC, uh, who will be represented by the head of the National Reference TB program. At the end of the process, we will be also lucky to have plenary discussion for each of those topics. And in, uh, in this, uh, the stage of the second topic, we will have also Kenya, who is also joining the implementing new tool program uh, more recently, and as a volunteer really to be there and participate to the discussion and share with all the countries uh, also their insight and their lesson learned with the early implementation. So I will not go on further and I will end up the stage to Dr. Uh, Vinzig, uh, who will be uh, doing the first uh, presentation, uh, presentation. Dr. Vinzig, you have the stage, please. Thank you very much, Marguerite, and good evening all. My name is Dr. Vinze Lucas. I'm a scientist in the TB program at FIND, and I'm leading TB CAPT as the uh, clinical trial manager. So we are currently faced with a diagnostic gap as each year more than 10 million people worldwide fall ill uh, with TB. However, only around 6 million of them are identified. So to achieve the WHO's um, NTB strategy by 2030, there's an urgent need to deploy strategies to improve TB diagnostic technologies that can not only detect disease, but can also allow for initiation of the correct care for people with TB. So the introduction of automated real-time PCR-based technologies such as GeneXpert have improved TB case detection and reduced diagnostic delay. However, many studies conducted uh, since its introduction have contributed to both an understanding of the test limitations and the need for better tests. Even more importantly, the studies highlighted the need for optimized implementation strategies for novel tests and improved linkage to treatment. Next generation tests such as the MoBio TrueNAT system need to be placed at point of care microscopy center level. Um, fully integrated in the diagnostic and treatment network, uh, connectivity enabled, more sensitive and able to provide and perform ex expanded drug susceptibility <laughs> testing. So the TBCAP consortium is uh, comprised of 14 organizations uh, from eight countries that will work together uh, to achieve a common goal to improve TB diagnostics and close the gap, increase access, and provide adequate therapy. As a consortium, we aim to capture the value that flows from diagnosis, uh, namely access to accurate treatment, disease control, uh, efficient healthcare spending, and empowered communities in order to demonstrate the contribution of diagnostics uh, to global development targets. The rationale of the TBCAP project is to provide evidence for impactful implementation of TB and TBHIV co-infection diagnostic strategies, including drug susceptibility testing uh, through three clinical trials, namely XDR, Exultant, and CORE. So through this series of clinical trials taking place in Tanzania, Mozambique, and South Africa, we aim to evaluate the impact of diagnostic interventions on outcomes, including the effects of expanded uh, TB testing strategies to people living with HIV. Uh, the trials have been designed to consider local epidemiology, as well as the existing infrastructure, and will compare new strategies with the current standards of care. In the XDR trial, led by Prof. Helen Cox at UCT, positive results on the expert, um, on expert ultra will be reflexed to the XDR cartridge enabling culture-free diagnosis for drug-sensitive and drug-resistant TB with the aim to assess the diagnostic accuracy and feasibility in South Africa. So Dr. Chad Sentner will be presenting after this and will expand a bit on the study design as well as uh, show some preliminary data. The exultant trial led by Prof. Alberto Garcia Bastiero at uh, IS Global 
um, looks at and investigates an expanded TB st uh, testing strategy for the most vulnerable patients with HIV infection through testing hospitalized people living with HIV, irrespective of TB symptoms. So the core trial led by Prof. Katerina Kranze from LMU is a pragmatic randomized control trial to assess, the to assess the impact of the implementation of the mobile MTB assays on the TrueNAT systems in peripheral healthcare clinics. Today, on-site rapid testing for TB is not available in most primary healthcare clinics in many countries where the disease is widespread. The result of which is that patients often need to wait um, for up to several weeks, uh, sometimes more than a month before they, before they receive the result. And if positive, only then do they begin treatment. And during this time, we know that there's a high risk of disease transmission. Um, so the Mobio platform is a battery powered rapid uh, diagnostic instrument that has the capacity to reduce turnaround time for TB um, to just a few hours, allowing patients who test positive to start TB treatment um, on the same day. And the primary objective of the core trial is to evaluate the effect of testing um, for TB using the TrueNAT platform uh, combined with rapid communication in the intervention arm and then standard of care in the control arm in these primary healthcare clinics to get to initiation of treatment within seven days of enrollment. So the first participants for core were recruited in late August this year. And thus far, 580 participants have been enrolled at 29 primary health care level sites across Tanzania and Mozambique, uh, with a target of 4,200 participants in the study before the end of February 2023. And to note again, the intervention arm here is on-site through NAT TB testing at primary health care clinics, combined with a rapid communication of results and same-day TB treatment initiation. And this is compared to the standard of care for TB testing using on-site smear microscopy and off-site expert testing. So the core trial also contains a qualitative study as well as a, a, a cost-effectiveness study. So incorporating patients' preferences in the development of a point-of-care strategy for TB diagnosis using the TrueNAT platform may facilitate its implementation and improve health outcomes. So aside from evaluating, evaluating the test accuracy, it is important to understand the experiences and preferences of those who will use the technology. Furthermore, an assessment of values and preferences, acceptability and ease of use is an integral part of WHO evaluation of novel diagnostic tests. And we intend to explore these aspects alongside the prospective study for the TrueNAT platform. Um, in terms of the cost effectiveness study that's linked to core, here we'll be estimating the effect of the TrueNAT platform on patient cost and productivity using a socioeconomic uh, questionnaire. And both the qualitative and cost effectiveness studies are led by uh, Dr. Claudia Denkinger at Heidelberg. So, capacity building is a central pillar in TBCAP. And the TB capped capacity building scheme led by Dr. Klaus Reiter at Swiss TBH uh, consists of three main components. Uh, the first one being training. So the team has developed a comprehensive study specific uh, training program, including sections on the implementation of new TB diagnostic uh, tests and the use of novel data collection methods. And they've also developed a four day free of charge training series on next generation sequencing for the MTB complex. The second is a mentor mentee program with eight mentor mentee pairs. Um, the focus of supporting junior researchers in learning specific skills and seeking career advice. Third, it's knowledge transfer and the TBCAP consortium consists of key experts in academia, clinical, and laboratory research in both Africa and Europe. And they guide MSc and PhD students in one-to-one -one meetings and share their expertise in TB diagnostics to foster the next generation of clinical scientists in Africa. So finally, impact, the TB cap. So TB cap aims to address the TB diagnostic bottlenecks um, by bringing diagnostics closer to patients in primary uh, healthcare clinics to provide insight into the benefits of expanded uh, TB diagnostic strategies for people living with HIV, um, improve public health, 
as well as share the findings with policymakers to enable them to make more informed decisions on implementation and scale up of innovative uh, diagnostic technologies. So in TBCAP, there are quite a few contributors and I would like to acknowledge our collaborators and partners within TBCAP. And I would also like to acknowledge the participants and their families. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Dr. Vinzig. We will be now uh, giving the stage to Dr. Chad Sentner, who will give us uh, some insight uh, into the early result of the XDRTB uh, trial. Good evening, thank you for having me. Um, I'm Chad Sentner. I work for uh, University of Cape Town and the National Health Laboratory Service of South Africa. And um, on the TB capped um, project on investigating the Cephade Expert MTB XDR um, assay. And this was um, a diagnostic accuracy study as well as a feasibility study um, uh, investigating uh, an implementation strategy of reflex testing of residual sample rifampicin resistance uh, sputum samples. And that will be the focus of this presentation. I'm sure everybody here is familiar with the Cephade Expert MTB RIF and MTB RIF Ultra. Um, which detects MTB and rifampicin resistance. However, it does not detect isoniazid um, or second line TB drug resistance, um, such as fluoroquinolones. And these are uh, required to decide on um, appropriate management for patients with drug resistant um, TB. So, conventional second line susceptibility testing using phenotyping is slow, um, requires culture facilities. Um, the uh, genotypic line probe assay um, is labor intensive, requires specialized facilities um, and expertise is in, and, and, and is expensive. So this led Cephid to develop the uh, expert MTB XDR assay. So like the MTB RIF and ultra assay, this is a rapid cartridge based real time PCR with results in 19 minutes. It can be done on raw or processed sputum and run on the same gene expert platform. However, an uh, updated 10 color module is required. And this assay uh, detects MTB as well as resistance to isoniazid, ethionamide, the fluoroquinolones, and second line injectable drugs. And the uh, gene targets um, they, uh, are listed in the top right of the slide. Um, the, the assay was endorsed um, via a rapid communication, uh, WHO rapid, rapid communication in 2021. Um, the uh, assay performs well with a um, sensitivity for isoniazid um, resistance detection of 94% and specificity of 100%. Um, and for fluoroquinolones, uh, sensitivity of 94% and specificity of 99%. And this was against the composite reference standard, including uh, phenotyping and whole genome sequencing. So in this study, um, um, this study was performed uh, in two high throughput uh, TB diagnostic laboratories in South Africa. Um, and um, we took consecutive um, specimens uh, submitted from patients in clinics and hospitals, and they were uh, processed for ultra um, as per standard operating procedure by the addition of sample reagent and then submitted for testing. So under normal circumstances, the uh, mix, the sample reagent and sputum mix is discarded at this point, but this, um, was, this procedure was modified for the study and the samples were retained and, uh, and refrigerated until completion of the ultra testing. At which point TB positive rifampicin resistant specimens were then retrieved and um, uh, submitted for XDR, uh, for testing on the MTB, MTB XDR platform. 
So the uh, ultra and the MTB XDR assay were performed on the same sample. Um, a second sample uh, is routinely submitted in South Africa for second line susceptibility testing. So at the first site, this was submitted um, at the same time as the first sample at the second site um, at the time of the receipt of the rifampicin resistant results by the clinician. So the study um, um, aimed to um, answer uh, the following feasibility questions. Um, to determine were, were the um, samples remaining after processing and ultra um, of adequate volume to perform the uh, XDR, M2B XDR tests, so um, two mils um, minimum. Um, did the laboratory workflow allow for the storage of specimens um, within uh, the manufacturer's recommendation? So the manufacturer recommends that um, uh, a maximum of four hours be between processing for ultra, so the additional sample reagent, and the run, uh, the MTB XDR run. And then um, bearing in mind that um, this would not always be feasible um, in the routine setting um, where uh, the storage time was extended beyond this um, cutoff, would this, uh, did this affect the MTB detection rate? or the obtaining of valid susceptibility results. And then finally, um, looking at turnaround time, comparing the MTB XDR assay versus standard of care testing, um, which consists mainly of line probe assays in South Africa, either directly on the specimen or a culture isolate. So preliminary results on 575 participants of a total of 753 showed that the vast majority, 98%, were of adequate volume for the MTB XDR. So after ultra, there were um, uh, more than two moles remaining. However, only a minority of specimens um, were held within um, four hours. Um, so uh, this differed between sites. So at site one, 30%. Um, uh, the, the XDR assay was run within four hours and 30% at uh, site one, but only 2% at site two. Uh, the XDR assay detected um, uh, MTB in 93% of samples. Um, uh, bearing in mind, these were all expert ultra positive. Um, so the different, differing limit of detection between the two assays potentially. Um, a full set of valid results um, were obtained. Um, so a uh, sensitive or susceptible or resistant result for um, all of the drug targets were obtained for the MTB XDR assay in 85% of participants of specimens versus 67% for standard of care. And this was a statistically significant difference. So there were 92 participants, uh, 92 specimens that were held um, for four hours, according to manufacturer recommendations between processing and MTB XDR run, and uh, 493, 493 or 83 um, uh, that were held, that exceeded that cutoff. Um, but that did not affect the MTB detection rate, nor the obtaining of a full set of valid results. And then looking at turnaround time, um, the median um, turnaround time, so time from receipt of the specimen in the laboratory and a, a full uh, set of uh, susceptibility results um, at site one um, in the standard of care arm was uh, five and a half days versus 18 hours for the MTB XDR. At site two, uh, st standard of care testing uh, took a median of 23 days um, and uh, the MTB XDR uh, 30 hours. So this study demonstrated that the vast majority of uh, residual specimens remaining after ultra were of adequate volume for uh, running of the MTB XDR assay. However, there were some challenges um, following the manufacturer recommendation hold time um, um, and um, 
but this, uh, there was no evidence that this affected the MTB detection rate, nor the obtaining of a full set of susceptibility testing results. However, we still need to establish whether the um, extended hold time had any effect on diagnostic accuracy. And we're in the process of finalizing the reference standard testing uh, for the study. And this is an important consideration given that um, uh, in a real world um, um, uh, setting, um, there could be um, delays between the running of the two assays. Um, there were a full set of uh, DST results were obtained in a significantly higher proportion of participants in the XDR, MTB XDR, um, using MTB XDR versus standard of care. Um, uh, 85% versus 67%. If you look at that 85%, you might think that's a low number. That was due to um, samples that were um, ultra semi-quantitation very low. So um, below the level of detection for the, um, uh, for the susceptibility testing, um, but um, those samples should still be included in, um, uh, in um, uh, uh, algorithms because um, uh, many of them did produce a valid set of results. And then as expected, the MTB XR assay resulted in a substantial decrease in um, turnaround time which could potentially improve uh, time to initiation of treatment and patient outcomes. Um, the MTB XDR may have um, reduced turnaround time, not only because of the rapidness of the assay, but also because it bypassed the need to wait for a second specimen for second line testing. And this was particularly at the second site where um, the, the second specimen um, is delayed uh, by uh, days or weeks. Studies are required to assess the impact of the um, new assay on patient outcomes, but this should not hold back implementation. So South Africa NHLS is in the process of implementing the assay and is currently in discussion with the Department of Health regarding reporting and interpretation of results and uh, the impact this has on laboratory and clinical decision pathways. So our study demonstrates just one potential diagnostic algorithm. Uh, algorithm. Another approach would be testing of all MTB positive samples, irrespective of rifampicin resistance. Um, and this would lead to the detection of INH monoresistance, which is increasingly being recognized. Um, as um, an important factor. Of course, the increased volume of testing would result in increased costs. The advantage of the um, MTB XDR assay is the leveraging of the existing infrastructure and systems and expertise around the gene expert platform uh, with the caveat that um, the, for the need of the updated 10 color module. And then it's also important to note that um, as second line injectables are phased out of uh, uh, regimens for drug resistant TB, um, the uh, susceptibility testing for those agents will become less important and future platforms should um, focus um, on bedaquilin and linezolid resistance. So I'd like to thank um, our, all the um, study personnel and all our partners um, uh, the yeah, funders, uh, EDCTP and um, management, uh, Link and Find, and uh, ASLM for the dissemination platform and support. Thank you. So thank you uh, to both uh, panelists really for uh, the presentation, excellent that has been made and really highlighting the effort being made to increase access uh, to rapid molecular diagnostics uh, tool, uh, really to achieve that objective of providing universal access to uh, TB diagnostics and drug resistance testing, not only for first line drugs, but also to second line drugs. And really, uh, as this is the entry point also to getting access to treatment and ideally injectables free uh, treatment. And so as part of the first presentation, so we, we uh, had uh, the focus on providing uh, XDR through the XDR cartridge uh, access to culture free uh, diagnostics. And we saw how 
through implementation trial, we are able really to generate those data and evidence, which will be informing us as a laboratory professional, but also as um, um, heads of, of TB program as to the potential bottlenecks, uh, a practical aspect that will be faced once the test is being rolled out at, at larger scale. And being able to anticipate means also being able to address. So we've had issues related to really the technicalities of doing the test in the lab. Uh, you know, when you're supposed to have two ML and you're faced with one ML, what do you do? Do you give up or do you still continue to, 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 to with the test? And with the evidence generated, you, we will be able to get um, really a guidance with regard to that. Also to take into account uh, aspects related to procurement and uh, upgrading the need for upgrading the equipment. Um, also, as part of the, the, the first presentation, we had again that emphasis being put on providing access to the vulnerable population. We are talking of people living with HIV. We need also to think about the children and, and the various population really that we need to reach out to. And also taking it from the central level all the way to the community level. And um, finally, uh, I would just uh, stop with um, those two points which have been uh, really highlighted, uh, evaluating impact, acceptability, because having a new platform is good, having it being used both by the hand user and also the test being really uh, the demand for the test by those who are supposed to access the test. This is important and also cost effectiveness for the Minister of Health, for the TB program. Once you go ahead and you roll out that tool, you know, Will you be more efficient and will, will you be gaining um, as far as funding is concerned, you know, making, uh, being able to save money and to uh, continue uh, uh, scaling up your effort to, to uh, fight against the disease. So with that being said, sorry, we will be moving on to the first plenary session. And so I will be uh, ending uh, the mic to you in the audience. If you have questions for the, our two panelists, please uh, just go ahead. Thank you. Yes, so I see a question in the back. So please, if you could introduce yourself and then uh, go ahead with the question. Thank you. And the country as well, please. Thank you. Thank you very much for the good, for the good presentation. My name is Amri Kingaro, a laboratory manager from Central TB Reference Laboratory, Tanzania. Uh, I have two questions. The, the first question is, uh, from the first presentation regarding these two technologies. We know that you have a limitation of the country to have ability to procure uh, enough cartridges. So what about using this code, the police put up sample to these two, uh, both uh, equipment, uh, if it is allowed or how, how, how can we as a, a scientific, uh, I mean, a scientific conference to, can, we can decide on whether we can use this sputum sample for diagnosis of TB or not. And the second one is for the second presentation uh, about the XDR. Uh, research, and uh, I would like to know about the pediatric response samples, maybe if we can use the uh, gastric leverage or other samples to diagnose the MDR from the, from the kids. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So maybe Dr. Vinzig for the, the first question. So thank you very much for your question. I think, I think the answer lies in two parts. Um, the first part will be based on, on our data, especially in the cost effectiveness study. I think at the moment, the per test cost for expert is um, high $9. 
and for the mobile it's around $13. Um, so this will require some negotiations going forward. But I think that competition allows these negotiations to drive prices further down. Um, regarding stock and stock outs um, for both expert and mall bio, um, I know at FIND we'll be working very closely with our impact and access units um, who will address the particular challenges um, and we'll be getting that information in the qualitative study, uh, especially with the extended CRFs and questionnaires that we've got. So it's a bit early to maybe answer the question specifically, but we will be addressing that um, within the study. And then I think you asked about um, non-sputum based testing, if I have that correct, or the reliance on sputum. Maybe you could just confirm before I answer. I was, I was asking using the Pull this putum samples for the next part. Couldn't hear that. Can you please move away a little bit from the mic? Yeah, and repeat the question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's about pull this putum samples for the next part. Oh, pulled. Okay, so so combined. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think I have an answer to that at, at the moment regarding pulled in uh, mobile, but that's something that I can, I can get back to you on. Thank you. Okay, maybe Dr. Uh, Sentner for the second question. Thank you. So um, in terms of um, pediatric samples, such as gastric lavage, um, we, we do not ex exclude pediatric uh, patients from the uh, study, but there weren't that many. I don't have the exact numbers now but we did um, exclude uh, gastric lavage samples. I think it's um, always a problem getting um, data for pediatric uh, patients um, and um, for extra pulmonary sample, samples in general for a lot of these assays. Um, and in particular, because we're looking at um, uh, drug resistance, the numbers would be um, even fewer. Um, I think a lot of time the, um, there, has, there has to be some extrapolation either from the adult data or the, uh, the pulmonary samples to the extra pulmonary samples or from other assays. So for example, from the MTB RIF um, um, Ultra um, and, um, and then perhaps like um, laboratory based studies. Um, and then um, for pediatrics, there's also the possibility of um, the utility of stool samples. I don't know if that's being investigated for um, um, for the XDR cartridge. I don't. I'm not 100% sure if there are studies underway for the uh, cartridge in pediatric populations. Maybe uh, we've got like virtual panelists. I think Adam or might uh, not. Okay. Um, uh, so I'm not. I'm not sure if there are any current studies currently underway. Okay, thank you. We will take a second question. Wow, okay. <laughs> so maybe we can start. Yes, please. Okay. Je vais parler en français, si c'est possible. Merci. Oui, je voudrais dire merci à tous les deux présentateurs. J'ai deux questions. Une question sur Prunat et une autre sur XDR. Sur Prunat, je vois que ça fonctionne avec une batterie. Cela dit que ça doit être installé probablement dans des laboratoires qui n'ont pas d'énergie comme électricité. Je me demande maintenant si la batterie se décharge, comment en fait on fait La deuxième question sur, qui porte sur XDR, je vois qu'on parle de moins de 4 heures pour passer de ultra à XDR. Est-ce que ça concerne l'échantillon déjà préparé pour mettre dans la cartouche ou ça concerne même les crachats quand on les utilise, le même échantillon testé à ultra pour passer à XDR? Je vous remercie. Ok, merci beaucoup pour la question. En ce qui concerne la première question, pour ne pas anticiper sur la deuxième partie euh, de la séance, donc on va attendre parce que je pense que les pays qui ont fait la mise en œuvre, euh, à l'expérience, oui c'est ça, vont pouvoir nous donner cette information. Merci. Je pense pour la deuxième question, nous allons passer la parole à Dr. Sentner. Uh, okay. 
Um, so yes, specifically that whole time relates to the period between the addition of the sample reagent and the running of the assay, whether it be um, uh, whether it be a, an ultra or the XDR, um, that is the manufacturer recommendation um, because they felt in experimental studies that there might be effect on uh, diagnostic accuracy, a drug detection of drug resistance if you um, if that period is extended. Um, I think the period between collection of the sample and the um, the actual run of the test remains the same. Um, I think it's up to seven days. Um, but I stand corrected on that as well. The answer? Je m'excuse, le début, j'ai raté la traduction. La question de savoir si c'est crachat ou échantillon préparé. OK, merci. OK, yeah. So it's just uh, the four hours pertains to uh, the time from the addition of the sample reagent to the run of the assay. And uh, it's whether it be the ultra assay or the XDR assay, the four hour limit remains the same according to the manufacturer. And it, it's not related uh, to the actual period of the, the, the collection time. So, si je peux me permettre, c'est après l'ajout du réactif. Pardon? C'est après l'ajout du réactif. C'est une fois que l'échantillon ah, okay. a été reçu. D'accord. Donc, c'est l'échantillon préparé exact. pour mettre dans la carte. Exact. OK. Merci. Merci. D'accord. Donc, oui, on prend une dernière question et on va aller vers la deuxième. Euh, juste, juste pour vous dire, s'il vous plaît, vous pouvez garder aussi vos, vos questions pour la fin parce que la dernière phase de panel. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I did not realize that I had switched to French. Excuse me. <laughs> so what, what I meant is that we will take a last question, but please, if you do have a question, hold it because at the end everyone will be on the stage and you will have the opportunity to ask again so maybe one last quick question thank you euh, euh, merci euh, moi je voudrais dire merci à, à Chad pour euh, ce test de X XDR bon je, je voulais emprunter la question de, de mon collègue parce que dans cette thèse, souvent avec le, le MTB-RIF, on a des vrais cas de tuberculose qui reviennent expert négatifs. Euh, bon, j'ai bien entendu que là, pour ces tests, ce sera parce qu'on nous reprend toujours en nous disant euh, c'est le pro problème de prélèvement. Donc, les crachats n'ont pas été bien, le patient n'a pas bien craché. Donc, à la fin, euh, nous aussi, on s'expose en tant que personnel de santé à dire aux patients de venir cracher là où nous, devant nous, pour qu'on essaie de bien évaluer euh, et la quantité de crachats et le fait que ce soit des crachats qui viennent complètement de, des poumons. Donc, avec euh, son, le, le 94 de sensibilité de ces tests, je pense peut-être que ça pourrait nous aider euh, parce que vraiment, comme je le dis, dans les cas de co-infection, il y a beaucoup qui reviennent négatifs et que parfois, c'est avec le traitement qu'on se rend compte que vraiment, on était en face d'une vraie tuberculose. Alors, ma deuxième préoccupation, toujours à, à, à Chad, euh, euh, cette, euh, ce, 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 ce réactif XDR, est-ce qu'on ne pourrait pas bon, le transposer euh, au VIH Parce qu'aujourd'hui, par exemple, dans notre sous-région, la chimio-résistance... Euh, aux, aux, aux inhibiteurs non nucléosidiques, la reverse transcriptase, est à près de 10 Il y a des pays qui continuent à utiliser ces, ces molécules alors qu'on sait que euh, c'est déjà multirésistant. Donc, euh, donc, on perd parfois beaucoup de patients à commencer avec ce traitement. Ça aurait été bien si on, on pouvait l'expérimenter aussi en matière de VIH parce que justement les tests de génotypage coûtent cher et beaucoup de patients après avoir débuté le traitement n'arrivent pas à faire leur génotypage ou passer dans la ligne de traitement adéquate. Donc si on pouvait expérimenter aussi le XDR pour le diagnostic du VIH avant la mise sous traitement, je vous remercie. Um, so um, we we did we did not include um, HIV. Well, we did not we did not collect that information about our participants um, because we had a waiver of informed consent. We um, included uh, participant samples without collecting um, too much demographic details. Um, I, yes, most uh, I, I, most of the time. 
patients with HIV have posterior biliary disease and they're more difficult to uh, diagnose um, in general, whether it be by smear uh, microscopy or culture or um, uh, um, uh, um, a genotypic test. Um, again, I think they're, um, I think the, the acid um, performed well, I'm not 100% sure, in, uh, or equally uh, well or as expected in HIV subpopulations. Um, I, I'd have, yeah, I'd have to get back to you on that. Um, in terms of um, um, sample collection, I think, uh, yes, uh, I think it, uh, the collection of samples is in general like uh, an issue with, uh, it's quite a biohazardous procedure. Um, a lot of facilities don't have um, uh, procedure rooms for collection of samples and um, healthcare workers and other patients are definitely exposed. I think that's a, a pro probably a problem. Um, uh, globally. Okay, thank you. I see that we have questions online. Uh, probably we will be taking them uh, during the second plenary because considering the time, I think we will now be moving uh, to the second part of, of this satellite session. And so as a reminder, the second part is really now uh, related to the TrueNet platform as an example of uh, near point of care, point of care uh, solution for molecular testing services for TB and drug resistance TB. And we will hear first from the introducing new tool uh, project. So Dr. Lucy Mfumpi, Mfumpi I'm, 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 I'm hoping I get the name right and sorry, apologies really Lucy if uh, that's not correct. And so she will give us uh, the context and some background information about the project uh, before we get feedback from the early implementing countries. And I would like to thank again our two uh, first panelists. They will remain here. They are still accessible for questions as needed. And don't uh, forget also after uh, the satellite session, you will have an opportunity to interact with them. Uh, okay, so can we confirm that Lucy is on Line and she's ready to present, please. And thanks, Marguerite. I am going to share my screen now. Let me know if you can hear me. We can hear you very well, Lucy. Welcome. Thank you. Oh. And Thank you. do see your slides. So the floor is yours. Please go ahead. Thanks a lot. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Unfortunately, I cannot share my video. So if that's all right with you, I will just continue with the presentation. That is very fun. All right. Thank you. Uh, so thank you again, Marguerite, and thank you to the ASLM for uh, organizing the symposium where we can share some of the work we've been doing with countries around introducing the TrueNet technology as part of our Introducing New Tools project. So just to give an overview of the project, this is a project funded by the, uh, by the USAID, and it aims to introduce new tools to help countries reach the UN high level meeting targets for the detection and treatment of TB, drug resistant TB and TB infection, as well as to demonstrate feasibility of using these tools to guide wider scale up. So uh, we have countries in Asia, nine countries that are currently implementing TrueNet, provided 301 instruments and 584,500 tests uh, for them to perform on the uh, the, the The service and maintenance is con conducted by the local agents that are conducted by mobile, and the instruments come with a one-year warranty. Also purchased an additional uh, two-year extension, which includes on-site interventions by the to repair or replace. Bio also provided instruments to turn around and replace. In terms of test for, uh, for the not and I just wanted to show you uh, on the on Constructions for the mobile and you know which and can do one test or a way you have when you can do at a time or as on the so the provided the instrument. Perhaps just of you of are safe or might not as a rapid my say performance shown to both the 
expert assets. So it consists of, of three assets. Uh, the first uh, was the TrueNet MTB assay, which uh, detected one gene copy, and the TrueNet MTB Plus, which uh, detects two gene copies uh, for the detection of TB, as well as the TrueNet MTB Rift DX, which is a reflex assay for the detection of Rift resistance targeting the RPOB gene. Uh, the devices are portable and battery operated and can be used in uh, environments of up to 40 degrees temperature or up to 80% relative humidity. The reagent shelf life is two years uh, and they can be stored at two to 30 degrees for the chips and two to 40 degrees for the uh, reagent preparation, which is your DNA extraction kits. Uh, it also has inbuilt connectivity and comes in uh, and comes with uh, or with the option to purchase global SIM cards that can allow uh, transmission of results via SMS and also the option to connect to uh, different connectivity solutions. The intended use case uh, is in microscopy centers and it's uh, it was recommended by WHO for near point of care use. So I just wanted to also highlight just the test procedures just quickly for those who may not be aware. So there are three main procedures, as I mentioned, there's a sample preparation using the sample preparation uh, kit, which liquefies the sputum specimens and lysis uh, cells. And then that's followed by extraction and purification of DNA in the true prep uh, sample device, which takes about 20 minutes. And then that's followed by uh, PCR amplification and fluorescent probe-based detection using the TrueNAT chips uh, for the MTB, for TB detection, and then the reflex uh, test for the RIF detection. So these are the two uh, devices that I use with the TrueNAT uh, kit. So for the INTP project, what we did was to provide practical guidance and training packages for countries to use. And this uh, guides and training packages have received GLI endorsement, and uh, we've also published them in French and in English. And for the for the training packages, countries are free to um, to to update them with, um, with with data from their from from for their local settings, and I'm showing you here on on the middle screen the TrueNet uh, implementation guides, and I'll speak more about this just shortly on what's contained in that implementation guide. Uh, the Infectious Disease Detection and Surveillance Project also supports uh, the size through enrolling them in EQA via SmartSpot, as well as training of super users to provide site-based mentorship. So just to speak to the practical guide, it, 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 it has a number of, uh, of example SOPs, uh, budget considerations, an example roadmap for implementation, an MND framework, some job aids, and some example checklists that can be used uh, for implementation, for maintenance of the equipment, to select the sites and to check if the sites are ready for implementation. And I'm just showing you here an example of a TrueNAT preventive maintenance log that was provided by the Bamenda TB lab to be reference lab in Cameroon, just showing the daily, monthly, and as needed maintenance uh, that can be that can be done on the TrueNAT instruments to just help uh, sites to document their procedures. We also have an MND framework that, that, that looks to the WHO indicators for lab strengthening to enable countries to, to start thinking about how to measure the impact of TrueNAT implementation. So in terms of the sites that were selected by the nine countries where implementation is currently going on, these were uh, low, low level health facilities selected uh, because they had a reliable simple transport system had availability of well ventilated rooms In some facilities this needed uh, minor renovations to be done, as well as considering the distance from other MWRs MWRD sites such as uh, the gene expert sites. And, and the pictures here are just showing you how remote some of those places where the TrueNAT instruments are placed. And on the bottom right, you can see an example from Philippines where they've been using the TrueNAT instruments primarily in their active case finding uh, activities. And you can see this is just uh, outside in, a, in an area somewhere because the TrueNAT instruments are portable and can be carried along from uh, one place to another. 
what we have also been doing is just to collect quarterly data from the countries to be able to see what are the trends and the testing rates and the error rates. And on the bar graph to my left, I'm just showing you uh, comparing uh, quarter one and quarter two of this year, just the trends in the extraction and the actual MTB plus tests that have been uh, done. And I'm showing you here data from four countries, as well as the MTB RIF tests that have been done. And we're seeing that there is a progressive increase in the number of tests uh, that are being done, um, particularly if you compare uh, uh, between Q1 and Q2. And we hope to, to be seeing this trend as more countries uh, start to submit data to us. On the uh, line graph to my right, this is, these are just the error rates that countries have been reporting uh, at the different stages in the processing of the sample on the true nut assays. So starting with the true prep where the DNA extraction is done and the MTB plus where the detection of TB is done and then the MTB reef stage where the detection of rifampicin resistance is done. You can see that on average, the errors uh, are decreasing. Uh, just we're seeing some an increase in the errors at the DNA extraction stage that may point to challenges with uh, the processing uh, elements of that. And IDDS through the super user program has been supporting sites uh, to enable them to, to, uh, to reduce these errors and we'll continue to monitor that. But quite interestingly, one thing we wanted to show was the impact on the WHO indicators I mentioned earlier, primarily the proportion of new relapsed TB that is tested with a WHO recommended molecular diagnostic test as an initial test, as well as the uh, proportion of new relapsed TB that is bacteriologically confirmed. And in the WHO report last year, they'd shown that even though we've had exports, still the proportion of new or relapsed TB that is tested with the WHO recommended molecular diagnostic is around 30%. But you can see here, I'm showing you data from two countries. Uh, we can see when you look at the line in, in, in turquoise blue, uh, you can see that this increase from uh, Q1 of last year when before true nut implementation from about 45% to 95.6% in Q1 of 2022. So these are really encouraging results that we're seeing with just two countries. And we hope we will continue to see this trend because this shows that uh, as, as we increase the diagnostic options, we'll be able to meet uh, those UNHLM targets. Uh, and I'm very excited to hear that uh, within the TB cap a project, the, the, the analysis looking at um, acceptability and feasibility of TrueNet as well as cost effectiveness, because those are some of the things that we are asking countries to be looking at in their operations research projects as they implement this TrueNet instrument. So I hope there is opportunity to collaborate on that with, with the country teams. We've also published uh, case studies that profile the country experiences with TrueNet implementation. And one of those that we recently published was with Nigeria, and they are going to talk more about their experiences shortly. So just as I conclude on the lessons learned, TrueNet testing has improved accessibility to uh, MWRD at lower level facilities. And in most countries where, this, uh, where TrueNet is being implemented under this project, it has replaced smear microscopy as the initial diagnostic test, which is great. Uh, we've also been having regular calls with countries as well as experience sharing webinars and mission trips that have allowed knowledge sharing among country teams, as well as understanding of the challenges with implementation. Early engagement of the implementing partners with key country stakeholders has also increased higher level support and acceptability of testing in the countries. We've also noticed and and, and, and I'm really happy to hear from the country teams that uh, the manufacturer mobile has been quite responsive to queries and there's been a good engagement with the local mobile agents in country, which has resulted in high instrument uptime. There are still some gaps uh, that we, we hope that with the IDDS super user 
uh, program can be closed, particularly around documentation, especially SOPs, maintenance charts, and uh, internal quality control, as well as waste management is still lacking at most sites. Uh, the TB registers have also not yet been updated to include TrueNet, which uh, sometimes results in errors in the recording of the results. So we hope these are some of the gaps uh, that will be closed and we look forward to hear uh, from the country teams as well on this. Uh, in terms of next steps, uh, we're, we're trying to share the lessons learned uh, with other countries and global stakeholders, and this will include uh, experience sharing uh, symposia like this. We're actually having another symposium at the Union Conference in November, and we'll, we'll continue to publish case studies from all the countries involved in the INTP project, as well as also publish some of the work that will arise from this. We we'll ensure that project countries are planning for scale up and we're really happy from our initial discussions with countries that this is something that they are already thinking about and they are already putting in into their global fund applications. There's need though for improved uh, quality management systems at the lower level facilities in order to ensure accurate data reporting, uh, as well as to continue supporting instrument connectivity to improve real-time data reporting and monitoring. I think so far, none of the TrueNet instruments on our project are, are connected yet to any of the connectivity solutions, although all countries are, are, are planning on this. So we hope this will be done soon. And we'll, this will also ensure optimal instrument uptime and um, continuous engagement with mobile. So with that, I, I thank all the teams from Stop TV, as well as the USAID and the mission uh, teams, as well as the implementing partners and the national TV programs. And I thank you again, Marguerite, for inviting us to give this presentation. Over to you. Thanks a lot, Dr. Mubfumi. So without further ado, we are running short on time and we want to hear from the country and we want to engage with the country. So I will call to the stage the, the, the team from Nigeria. So live with us today is Mr. Elom Emeka Uga, which is the deputy director for the TB control program, uh, Federal Ministry of Air. And also with us uh, remotely is Dr. Nkiru Nwokoye uh, from K, uh, KNCV uh, office in, in Nigeria, as well as Mr. Olab. Miji Jamiyu Olayinka, Senior Laboratory Advisor with IHBN. Thank you are all welcome. Greetings everyone and uh, special greetings to the SLM and everyone that is supporting you. Um, for me, SLM is the voice of Africa and uh, we see you are doing great work. I've been introduced, she has already mentioned my name and that is uh, Elam Emeka from Federal Ministry of Health, Nigeria, NTP, uh, TB Laboratory Services uh, Lead. And uh, most of our team members are also on the call and during the discussion, I'm sure, if given opportunity, they will also make some contribution. So we are sharing our experiences on uh, TrueNet uh, implementation in Nigeria. So the first slide and the next one are just simple introductions. One, Nigeria is a huge opportunity for everything that is good. And uh, from the data we're also going to see, you will see that your investment in Nigeria is, uh, yeah, is meaningful. So just to tell us that we have a huge number of microscopy centers, over 3,500. That is outside the standalone private laboratories under the leadership of the Guild of Medical Laboratory Directors. And the NTP is engaging them gradually. We also have the TB reference laboratories and they are 10 in number. We have the TB lamp 14. We have the three nuts that just came last year, 38 plus one. And then we'll have the primary diagnostic tool. You know that Nigeria uh, adopted GNSPAT in 2011 with less than 10 machines. And in 2016, we adopted it as primary diagnostic tool. So at the moment, we have 494 GNSPAT machines installed in the country. And there's ongoing retrieval and distribution based on utilization. So if you look at the local government coverage for GNSPAT in Nigeria, we have 47%, telling us that there's still a huge gap on molecular testing. 
The next you see is the progress reports. And I'm not going to go through all the notification years, but you can see what has happened in Nigeria. Let's look at what happened in the year of pandemic. That is 2020. The global report, which you have celebrated Nigeria. Because 2020, with all the issues, Nigeria notified 138,000 plus. And last year, 2021, we went further to notify over 207,000 cases plus. That's huge support. And that is to show the government support and whatever you're bringing to Nigeria is yielding results. And that's why we're asking for more. The next you see is uh, the diagnostic uh, contributions. What we are seeing is just the first semester for this year. And that is what we call quarter one and quarter two, 2022. So what you have there is a contribution proportion by clinical diagnosis is giving you 20%. The primary diagnostic tool, which is expert, is giving you 62%. Then the TB lamp, LF lamp, and also the Trinat that came on board. So respectively, we are having 1% each. Microscopy is still giving us 15% uh, because even though we're not projecting microscopy, but we still have gaps. That's why we are saying we need more molecular assay in Nigeria. What you are seeing is the coming of the Trinat, and that is the discussion we're having here. I want to thank the Stop TV Partnership want to thank the USID team, wonderful team globally and also in Nigeria. They are doing a wonderful work for us. At the NTP, we believe in corporate engagement. So the door of the NTP manager, and Dr. Chukuma Anyike, is open to everyone. So when we're talking of sustainability and issues around demand creation, we don't look more on that because we believe in engagement. If the door of NTP manager and all stakeholders is open and there is discussion, it makes sense easy to work together. So we installed the 38 Trinat machines that we got last year. Uh, and we saw them where in 14 states. And in Nigeria, we have six zones. So every zone has at least one of the Trinat machine. Where did we install the machines? From the previous presentation from Lucy, you can also see, we looked at where we had issues around the molecular testing. And also where we have personnel that needed their capacity to be built among other criteria. But we also know there are key partners that supported us. And that is the KNCV Foundation Nigeria and also the Institute of Human Virology Nigeria. These are great team that we have. So how do we do it? Implementation strategy. How do we do that? The first thing we did was to engage stakeholders. We are aware of the WHO recommendation and the Trinat coming on board. And we needed to also embrace what the world is looking at. So what did we do? The first thing we did was to have stakeholders meeting to develop roadmap for Trinidad implementation in Nigeria. When we finished the workshop, we took the report to the Honorable Minister of Health. He gave us endorsement. He said, yes, because you are doing the right thing, because you have engaged stakeholders and they have made this recommendation, I approve that Trinidad should be implemented in Nigeria. So next after that, we had a workshop, technical workshop to develop the guidelines on uh, Trinidad implementation in Nigeria. The workshop was well participated by different stakeholders, including the WHO and all stakeholders. And after that, we looked at site selection, which we did in collaboration with the state program managers. You are aware that Nigeria has 36 states plus FCT. So if you say 37, you are correct. So we engaged the facilities and program managers where the machines were going to be installed. And because we have earlier developed the guidelines, so we have a direction, we have a roadmap. And in the process of doing that, we also had appropriate checklists for mentoring, for assessment, and for all. So thereafter, we did um, training. We did a national training, that is the TOT. And then we also did the sub-national training at the zonal level before we went to the facilities to do the training. At the facility, we'll have three-day based training for laboratorians. And the last day training is focused on all the laboratorians, the clinicians, and everyone, the administrators, people were impressed. They wanted to see the new thing that is coming on board. And as you are aware, some of the facilities that got the Trinat were also private sector. So some of the things that needed to put in place to run the machine, they participated in buying and making sure that the things work well. So that is part of what happened. And a few months after that, we also went ahead to do joint mentorship and supportive supervision. Gaps were identified and we followed up with all the issues and fix them. So the picture you are seeing here is the TOT. 
participants with the national uh, program team and all stakeholders, WHO, KNCV, and all, the USID team. So these are representations from different organizations that participated at the TOT. And of course, the master trainers were the country representatives from the MOBIO. These are responsive people that have integrated themselves into our system. So we know them and they know us very well and work together as a team. So at the center of the picture is the director and the national coordinator of the program, Dr. Chuku Mainike. His door is open. We want to meet him on public orders, let him know on time. So his WhatsApp is open, his email is open, his calls are open. And that's what we believe. For you to discuss integration, discuss sustainability, and discuss demand creation is all about transparency. Let people get to know the entry points. So that is what we did. So what you are seeing here tells the story by itself, basically. So what we have is the TOT that was also done at the national level. And I said earlier, we also went further to do that at the zonal level and also at the facility level. So issue of um, demand creation is all about awareness creation. It's all about engagement, corporate engagement, which you feel is part of what is already happening. And that is helping us as a system. Sorry. And uh, on supply planning and EQA, yes, as we got the TRUNAT instruments, we also got along with it the consumables, which were also distributed along the line appropriately. So that was also done. And it's also good for us to know that not quite long, I think it's less than two months now, the national program, together with all stakeholders, conducted the national quantification for all test menu. TRUNAT platform was among. Yeah, Margaret, thank you for reminding me. The time is short. So um, all of that testimony was also quantified. And then it's also good, it's a good news for us to know that TrueNAT is also part of the national diagnostic platform already. So all our tools, TrueNAT is there. Look at our national strategic plan, the NSP, TrueNAT discussion is there. Look at the NTP guideline, TrueNAT is there. The reporting and recording tools, the current one updated in the, the facilities, TrueNAT is there along with all other uh, test uh, menu. Minimal facility infrastructure, uh, minimal facility upgrade was done, as, as I said earlier. In some cases, we were in a facility where the medical director of a facility that had the genius part bought some of the accessories, even before we went there. So but we know there are issues around power. So the implementing partners also made provision for generator and fueling, which is uh, making the system to run. Uh, maintenance issue. I said earlier, the country have a country rep for Mobile, and uh, they are responsive to issues arising from facilities. And then um, issues around um, uh, maintenance is timely responded to. Once they get such a um, query, they respond. Thank you. <laughs> Digital connectivity. We want to appreciate, we want to appreciate the Stop TV partnership and the UN office for project uh, services for their support to NTP. Through them, the system one team they are already establishing the connectivity platform. And uh, that discussion is going on. And the SIM card, the global SIM card installation is also part of the package that the national program is uh, planning. And that will happen shortly. Um, waste management is a good discussion. Talking about integration, talking about new innovation, it goes along with sample referral and waste management. For us, facilities have their respective policy on waste management. They will emphasize the contamination as it relates to this, using appropriate solvents to ensure that you decontaminate appro appropriately before you do any form of uh, uh, discarding any waste uh, products. This is a picture we need to take note of. The upper picture is the guideline development. You see the representations from different stakeholders. At the center, seated on a suit is Dr. Ayodele Awe. I'm sure many of us have heard of him from WHO Nigeria, experienced. He was at all the process of TrueNAT implementation, sharing experiences, as we are aware, the daughter away has passed on. And may his soul rest in perfect peace. The picture down is one of the assessments we did in one of the facilities in the Northeast, specifically Bauchi State. At the center is also a WHO rep, Dr. Haruna. Beside him is also the state program manager of the state. So it's all inclusive. It's all people working together to ensure. So, what are the lessons learned? Awareness creation is all about engaging people, transparent, open up from beginning. Entry points, let everyone be on board and people will work together to support what you are doing. User perspective, 
through that needs manipulation of samples. So the personnel need to be trained. And power is also a concern because the platform needs to be charged. Another wonderful picture. You may not be able to see the people there, but what is happening there is the official handover of the new tools to the government. Here, the Honorable Minister is represented by the NTB manager, Dr. Chukuma Ike. And if you look around him, you see representations from all over in the country. The Global Fund team are there. The Subject Partnership are there. USID, they are there. KNCV, they are there. These are wonderful team that are supporting all the progress support in Nigeria. So we appreciate you for what you are doing. And we'll have a report to say that your investment in Nigeria is visible. And we're asking for more. <laughs> Thank you. So thank you for an excellent presentation from Nigeria and for reminding us that if you want to go far, you know, you go with people on board. So we will be now uh, transitioning to the next country, which is Zimbabwe. So I would call on the stage Mr. Tanaka Sakumbani, which is uh, the National TB uh, Laboratories Coordinator at the Ministry of Health in Zimbabwe, and also Dr. Fibin Zombi, which is the country, lead, country team lead. Sorry getting late <laughs> for uh, IDDS project in Zimbabwe. Uh, you may join. Thank you very much. And so let's hear about the experience of Zimbabwe. Good evening. Uh, my name is Tanaka Sakubani. I'm the National TB Labs Coordinator in Zimbabwe. Uh, I would like to thank ASLM for giving us this platform to share experiences and also to to share experiences and also to why uh, to introduce these new technologies and its impact in the diagnosis of TB across countries and Zimbabwe was fortunate enough to, uh, to be one of the three countries in Africa to pilot this this project. So this, this will be just a, a, by my presentation outline, I'm going to talk about the structure of the diagnostic network in Zimbabwe, the background of the TrueNAT placement, the TrueNAT introduction, the TrueNAT rollout itself and support for the TrueNAT size in order for the continue, to, to, to have continuity in testing. And I'm going to also to talk about the, the testing data we have collected so far and the challenges and lesson learned and way forward as we move on to, to introduce this exciting technology. So in Zimbabwe, the structure of the, the network is like we have put two, two reference labs. We have divided the country into two, the southern and the northern region. And we have five central labs uh, with, with 10 provincial uh, laboratories and 111 district admission hospital. These are intermediate labs. And at the lower level, we've got one or two uh, peripheral labs. And these are the labs which we were targeting in terms of uh, deployment of the TrueNAT uh, technology. In 2011, Zimbabwe adopted the, the Genexic Ultra test as a, a initial test for, for presumptive TB cases. So in this case, we were, <clears throat> these are rapid diagnostic uh, uh, technologies which are recommended by WHO and to date we have deployed about 155 gene expert machines. We know we are, sm we are a small country, we can't compare with Nigeria which is very popular as having double the, 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 the quantity of the machines and these are deployed to 144 sites. And we, we currently use microscopy as a monitoring uh, for monitoring treatment and we also have three LPA labs where we have two LPA tests being done at reference lab in an additional LPA lab in one of the sites. So in terms of the background now, in 2021, we received the 20 TrueNAT sites through the project of the new tools to strengthen access and also a, a improve access to the, the WRD through Stop TB and support from uh, IDDS in rollout in collaboration with the Ministry of Health. So 
when we initially deploy, deployed the, these genetic fake machines, what we did is we were looking at the mainly at intermediate labs going upwards because we were looking at the workload, the population density mainly, which is concentrated mainly in, in urban centers. So you can see from the map that uh, mainly the 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 genex the genex genex machines were deployed in urban areas and district laboratories and far in rural areas we we had gaps in terms of access to WRD. so we're targeting those rural areas in terms of deployment of the of this uh, true nut technology so those two maps if you if you can see the top map those are the sites which we deployed uh, the, 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 the tuna technology. But if you compare now with the previous map, you see that more of those were now deployed to the to, to where centers we, we didn't have the, the, the technology. And the, the map below uh, shows the combined deployment of both tuna and, and uh, gene expect. And it illustrates the coverage, the increase in coverage in terms of the the accessibility to this technology. And when we were placing these machines, uh, we were looking at the national uh, strategic plan, uh, what we wanted as a country in terms of coverage. And also we had a, a TB diagnostic network, which, carried, which we carried out in 2020 and gaps were identified in terms of access uh, to this technique to WRD. And in 2020 also we carried out the special analysis to inform us in terms of deployment and together with the consultations with stakeholders, we managed to, to come up with those sites for deployment. So during rollout, we, we first engaged stakeholders uh, so that everyone would be on board in terms of the introduction of this new chocolate technology. And we came up with the, the policy for deployment. Then the, what followed was the site selection and uh, after selection, we managed to train the OK workers, especially lab people in the use of the machines and installation followed up uh, with, with more bio assistance. Then in terms of support for tuna sites, uh, we've got four pillars of support. We, 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 we trained the tuna super users who constantly uh, mentor the sites in terms of use and also troubleshooting when there's need. We've got a scheme for proficient testing, targeting also the sites so that quality is also maintained. We review data quarterly with the sites and also mapping way forward informed by the, the, the data we, we generate. And also we have this physical and, the, and the remote mentorship through our super users network and also uh, the national uh, the national team is a combined supervision uh, teams to two sides. So this is a cycle which supports the, this, 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 this implementation and continuous testing. The PT scheme, the mentorship, the data review meetings, and true super user mentorship all uh, contributing to this uh, continuous testing and, and quality, quality improvement among the sites. Now, I'm going to talk about the data. If you can look, we, we introduced this technology in 2021, in December 2021, there was a gradual increase when people got to, to know the technologies and also it, 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 it moderated along the implementation, which emphasized the need to continue sensitization of the, the existence of the, of, the, of the technology as well as carrying out more uh, DNOs in order to, 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 to come up with informed data in terms of, of uh, where this, this WRID exists. Because what we are experiencing is that in some areas, they are still referring the samples to, to genetic centers because of the, the, the knowledge gap among the, 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 refer, the referral systems. So in terms of challenges, we have the facility-based challenges uh, where we have poor network con connectivity and this, we, can, we cannot hold these uh, productive virtual meetings and also reporting PT results, which are supposed to be reported online. The sites cannot do that. 
So we also have prolonged power outages. This machine can sustain testing of eight hours, but sometimes the the, the power outage goes beyond the, the eight hour uh, sustainability of the machine. And also we may have experienced the printers uh, break down in some size, but these have been replaced by, by the agent with a uh, local agent of mobile in country. Then we talk of also of personnel based uh, challenges. We, we lack trained competent staff to cover absences or and to ensure continuity of operations you find that the, this size, this is a lower level size, they'll be having one cadre who, who, who will be manning the site. When he goes on leave, the site will be closed and also disturbing the, the, the continuous testing. Quality management system remains a challenge. These are lower level centers. So we feel also there's need to, to improve and also mentor these sites in terms of a quality management system through our certification. Uh, a, a quality management approach. And low number of specimens due to information gap in respective catchment area, like I said, in some sites, they still have knowledge gap in terms of existence of this technology around their, the, uh, around the, in, the, in their area. And also poor specimen quality has contributed to error rates, especially on extraction. In terms of lessons learned, uh, the backup power should be provided to, to charge the machines, at least some backup power, so that they, they sustain the machines for more than the period you would need them to, to continue testing. Internet connectivity is required so that we carry out these virtual trainings as well as uploading the results uh, electronically. And testing sites should, provide, should be provided with ancillary equipment and support, especially issues to do with the uh, small equipment like timers, uh, small pipettes for preparation of, of, of some reagents and, and consumables, which need to be reconstituted. In terms of personal based lessons learned, uh, we trained a supervisor group, which is essential in supporting quality in terms of uh, continually improving quality for the testing sites. Uh, additional training of end user staff for each lab is necessary to ensure continuity in testing. End user in, 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 in person refresher training should include good lab practice, EQA, quality management systems, and sensitization. In terms of next steps, uh, MOHC will continue through IDDS, will continue to support uh, these, these super users in terms of mentorship and, and support at a lower level to these sites. And we intend also to, to, to do quantification so that regions also procured through the normal channels of global fund. We also need to improve storage for consumables and samples at site level and end users to monitor areas and conduct root code anal analysis uh, uh, periodically. We also need to connect these TrueNet devices onto the, our electronic data systems, the GX Alert, which, which connects also the, the gene expect uh, platforms in order to have the real data reporting. Yeah, I would like, to, I thank you so much and I would like to acknowledge those the, which, which we collaborated with the USAID uh, and the IDDS and the STOP partnership, STOP TB partnership in implementing this rollout of TrueNAT technology. I thank you. So uh, a big thank you to uh, Mr. Tanaka for uh, his excellent presentation as well and showing us, you know, in programmatic condition on the field, how those, those concepts that we have presented today, such as optimizing your diagnostic network, how is this done, you know, in real life? And also, of course, super users and QMS, that is really important as a foundation of uh, the quality of the services we are providing. So we have now one last presentation. So I am aware that we are uh, slightly over time, also because we started late. And uh, apologies again to the speaker because <laughs> I'm showing the time, but they don't want to be the people standing between you and, and your dinner later on. So we will have, we are very uh, lucky. We have a last presentation from DRC, 
because actually it has been a challenge to get Dr. Aloni uh, with us tonight, but she's currently online. So she, uh, we will give her the floor if she can confirm that she can speak. Dr. Aloni, est-ce que vous êtes en ligne? Oui, docteur, est-ce que c'est bon? Oui, c'est bon. D'accord. Uh, le partage des diapositives, um, est-ce que c'est po est possible de partager de votre côté? Oui, on partage. Merci beaucoup. Donc, Dr. Aloni, s'il vous plaît, vous êtes la dernière présentation, mais peut-être avant de commencer, I would like to call to the, the, the floor with us the representative also from Kenya, uh, because they will be part also of the plenary discussion. So I would like us to welcome from Kenya, uh, Ms. Nelly Mukiri, uh, the National TB Reference Lab Manager, as well as Dr. Jacqueline Kisia, who is the head of the TB program uh, in Kenya. So they are both welcome as well. Yeah, we should, we should applaud them because they volunteer to be here. So, and this is hugely appreciated. Uh, Dr. Aloni, la présentation va être en français? Yes. Parfait. Comme ça aussi, les collègues français, ça leur donnera l'occasion d'avoir une présentation dans leur langue. Donc, Dr. Aloni, vous avez 10 minutes. Merci beaucoup. OK. Euh, je suis docteur Muriel Aloni, donc la responsable du laboratoire national de référence en RDC, donc basé à Kinshasa. Donc nous allons vous parler de notre expérience sur l'implémentation du TrueNet. Alors voici notre plan de présentation, donc il va comprendre six points. La, la RDC. Donc, comme on le sait, fait partie des dix pays qui portent euh, la lourde charge de la tuberculose, de la co-infection TBVIH et de la tuberculose multirésistante. Chaque année, près de 2000 cas de tuberculose sont notifiés. Et le majeur, le majeur problème euh, au niveau du programme, c'est la sous-notification des cas. Donc, euh, on manque en moyenne 40 des cas. Et pour le diagnostic, la RDC a adopté l'outil moléculaire comme test initial, mais dans les sites où se trouve l'outil. Vu la grandeur du pays et le nombre des machines moléculaires dont nous disposons, donc nous avons une faible couverture en outils moléculaires. Il y a eu le projet New Tools financé par USAID avec des partenaires Stop, T Stop TB qui a eu proposé un, un projet sur l'utilisation des nouveaux outils. Et ce projet a été accueilli comme vraiment une opportunité en RDC. Et dans le cadre de ce projet, 38 machines Trunat ont été reçues. Sur cette dia, nous reprenons un peu la structuration du réseau de laboratoires en République démocratique du Congo. Donc, nous avons les trois niveaux, avec le, le niveau central, avec un laboratoire national de référence. Il y a le niveau intermédiaire, provincial, avec 27 laboratoires. Et nous avons le niveau périphérique, avec plus de 2000 centres de diagnostic et de traitement. La DSI montre en gros les performances du programme national en 2020. Donc, nous voyons un peu la cascade des dépistages des cas en 2020. Et comme on l'a dit au départ, donc nous avons un gap dans le dépistage, la notification des cas. Alors, le projet New Tools, c'est un projet qui a démarré en mars 2022. Donc, sur cette image, nous voyons... Le, le, le jour du lancement du projet avec le directeur du programme national de lutte contre la tuberculose en RDC. Les étapes que nous avons suivies pour pouvoir euh, implémenter le projet TRUNAT, c'est que nous avons eu premièrement donc, euh, à finaliser le projet. Une fois que le projet avait, a, a été finalisé, donc nous avons, il y a eu le lancement 
du projet avec les partenaires clés impliqués dans ce projet. Ensuite, nous avons validé les sites, donc les sites qui ont été sélectionnés. Donc, il y a eu des critères pour pouvoir sélectionner ces sites. Le principal critère que nous pouvons citer, c'était par le critère que le site qui devait recevoir la machine TrueNAT ne devait pas avoir un gene expert. Et en collaboration avec euh, l'USAID, IDS, RDC et les MOL Bio, il y a eu la formation des utilisateurs. Euh, les utilisateurs, donc les machines ont été placées dans quatre provinces sur les 26 que compte la RDC dans la phase pilote. Après la formation des utilisateurs, il y a eu une formation sur les super users. Ensuite, nous avons fait des visites de suivi et la collecte des données. Nous avons implémenté l'évaluation externe de la qualité avec Smart Spots et nous avons déjà reçu un premier round. Donc, ça s'est passé en juin où 37 sites ont pu participer avec une moyenne de score de 90 La DIA suivante présente ici, donc comment sont réparties les machines, la distribution des machines au niveau du pays. Donc, nous avons pris les, donc, il y a Kinshasa, donc à l'ouest, au centre, la province du Kassai oriental, et nous avons deux provinces au sud du pays. Alors, quels sont les succès que nous avons obtenus avec euh, le TrueNAT? Donc, euh, au niveau des différents sites qui utilisaient la microscopie avant, donc euh, il y a eu maintenant implémentation de l'outil moléculaire tel que recommandé par l'OMS pour diagnostiquer la tuberculose et rechercher la résistance à la répondicide. Et nous avons remarqué qu'au niveau de ces sites qui utilisaient la microscopie avant et pour lesquels nous avons placé le TrueNAT, il y a eu une augmentation du nombre des cas TB et de TB résistants à la rifampicine. Donc, le nombre des cas TB bactériologiquement confirmés a augmenté au niveau de ces sites durant les trois premiers mois d'implémentation de la machine. Et comme succès aussi, c'est que nous avons les super users qui ont été formés et ces super users formés fournissent, donc apportent un appui très considérable au niveau des sites en cas de problème. Donc, ils résolvent certains problèmes directement sur site. Et les principaux challenges que nous rencontrons avec l'implémentation, bon, on a commencé les tests, à réaliser les tests TrueNAT, donc vraiment en avril 2022. Les problèmes rencontrés régulièrement à ce jour, ce sont les erreurs des codes. Les, les, les codes les plus fréquemment rencontrés, c'est l'erreur 9, 10 et 11. Nous avons des erreurs dans les, les, les techniciens dans les placements de la cartouche, la carte, pour placer un nouveau lot de kits. Donc, c'est l'erreur qu'on rencontre aussi. Il y a la non reconnaissance de l'imprimante par la machine. Au niveau des techniciens, donc dans des coins un peu réculés, le grand défi, c'est le pipettage. Donc, nous avons un problème avec le pipettage des, de l'échantillon ou des réactifs. En dehors de cela, il y a quelques problèmes qui nous arrivent régulièrement qu'il faudrait résoudre. Ce sont les dérèglements, donc de l'heure, de la date et les dommages qui sont causés au niveau des batteries ou des imprimantes suite à l'instabilité de l'électricité au niveau des sites. Les leçons apprises avec euh, l'implémentation du TrueNAT, c'est que nous avons vu après la formation qu'il euh, y a une équipe forte disponible pour travailler sur les TrueNAT et qui est focalisée fait un focus sur le but, donc le, la détection des cas pour essayer de réduire les gaps. Il y a une implication du, de, des partenaires clés dans ce projet. Ils sont fortement impliqués. Il y a eu un renforcement des capacités, un apport en support pour le, les techniciens des laboratoires. Voilà un peu ce que nous voudrions partager avec vous.
au sujet de l'expérience de l'implémentation des TUNATS en RDC. Et nous espérons qu'après cette phase pilote, on pourra étendre l'outil moléculaire au niveau de la RDC et réduire le gap dans la détection. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup, Dr. Aloni, pour le partage de l'expérience de la RDC. Donc, euh, il nous reste environ une dizaine de minutes avant d'être à la demi de l'heure. Euh, nous allons donc consacrer cette période. Sorry. <laughs> so, everyone has the head, so it's fine. So, on... <laughs> Coming back to English, so for the rest of, of you know, for the next 10 minutes, we will be um, giving first the floor to the Kenya team because we've had the experience sharing uh, from Nigeria, from Zimbabwe. Uh, we now have also experience sharing uh, from DRC. And so uh, as Kenya has also joined uh, the introducing new tool project, maybe they can give us uh, their perspective, maybe some elements that were not covered by others. I would just like to highlight one point from Dr. Muriel's uh, presentation that EQA, they were also able to put in place. And we know how important that is. We've seen also the importance of EQA as you are really scaling up molecular diagnostic, for example, for COVID-19. So that is a way also to check um, how well you're doing. So maybe just uh, passing the floor to uh, the team from Kenya. Can we get the mic? Yes, please uh, go ahead. The opportunity um, for Kenya, uh, we didn't start uh, long ago. We started just um, in July, that's when we launched the six uh, tools. That is the um, DAT, the digital adherence uh, technology, the True Nuts, which were 38 uh, under the support of uh, USAID, the IGRA for TPT, and the uh, connectivity, um, which is currently um, in the process of being developed and also. Um, Apart from lab, we had the digital card x-rays. So this was launched in July, but we started planning for this um, in March where we had um, training at the national level. Partners were also trained and um, we cascaded uh, down to the county level where um, some of the facilities were um, selected and um, like the 38 uh, true nuts, we knew where they were going to go. They were, there was a select selection which was done according to which facility is um, uh, needy for this uh, true nuts machines. Um, training was done and um, from national to the county, we, Kenya has 47 counties. So the 38 went to not all the counties, definitely. And uh, uh, we only looked at the vast uh, counties uh, with electricity issues. And uh, that's where they were placed, but high burden country, counties. Um, we launched in July and in three weeks time, um, I was privileged to visit uh, one county where they had the true Not machine and the IGRA machine, but the IGRA machine had uh, an issue. So uh, what we looked for was the commodity status, how the, the bean cards were uh, filled in, how they received the commodities and um, SOPs, whether they were available. And uh, we looked at also uh, cleanliness and uh, uh, space, whether, uh, and also availability of uh, tools, because we had developed new tools for the True Nuts uh, recording. Um, for the um, launch, we had a very strong political uh, goodwill. The Ministry of Health was present. And um, also it was um, in the media houses. So most of the um, 
stakeholders got to know there was uh, demand creation and awareness of the new tools which are being launched. And WHO was uh, present in the launch and also in development uh, partners and implementing partners. Um, maybe I would give my colleague a chance. Uh, thank you so much, but uh, I think uh, Dr. Kisia has covered a lot. And uh, uh, maybe for the gaps, it's that uh, we are experiencing the same gaps as the other countries, documentation uh, for the registers and uh, the connectivity is yet in progress. Thank you. Thank you so much to the team from Kenya. Um, I would like also to really thank Dr. Jacqueline also because she's actually highlighted that you need many tools in your toolbox to fight TB. You have prevention as well, so that's IEGRA. You need to go into the communities and sometimes, you know, uh, the test as the bacteriological confirmation is not enough. You need the chest X-ray as well. And those are also the other component of the introducing new tool, uh, the, 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 from the Stop TB Partnership and USAID. So we are focusing today on TrueNet, but there are other uh, tools in the toolbox, as I was saying. So we will be moving forward with some questions. Uh, maybe we'll take some here uh, from the room, but also I will uh, take some from the audience. If you are asking a question, can you please direct it so just specify to uh, whom you are asking the question. And if the question is going to Nigeria, we will be calling upon also the colleagues which are online, if they can confirm. So do we have the colleague from KNCV and IHVN online? And can they have their mic uh, activated in case they need to answer a question, please? Yes, good evening. This is Jamie from IHVN, we're online. Yes. Okay, you yes, I'm here. You Hello, are here from Ken. Yes, TV. you are most welcome, both of you. And thank you for staying online. Uh, we know we are above time, but the topic is interesting. So let us uh, take a, a few questions. Uh, any questions from the audience? So maybe from Cameroon, please. Bonsoir à tous. Je suis Valérie Dantin du Cameroon. La question s'adresse au Nigeria. J'aimerais savoir par rapport au TrueNAT, quel est le coût du, la, du test, quel est le coût de la machine. Euh, pour une série de tests, combien de tests peut-on faire et pendant une journée de travail, combien de tests peuvent être réalisés? Merci. Okay, so those are very technical questions. They will be going to either uh, KNCV or IHVN. Who wants to take the question? Cost. Okay, can I take the question? Please go ahead, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you everyone. Uh, concerning the cost of the machine on the GTF uh, uh, catalog, the, the uh, you know, uh, which is just one module through that machine is $10,000, while the quarter is $14,000 and the, uh, the, the duo is $14,000, while the quarter is, uh, is eighteen thousand dollars. So, but getting it directly from mobile, I think uh, there should be a, there should be different between what is on the catalog and uh, what uh, mobile is selling. And um, uh, concerning the uh, the second question, uh, maybe another person should take that, or I should still go ahead. Or well, maybe you can. Sure. Thank you. Okay, Thank I should you. go ahead. No, if she can come on, thank you. So you can go ahead. I find it difficult to uh, manage the interpretation. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 So uh, the the manufacturer is looking at eight to uh, twelve tests, but currently in Nigeria we have facility that have tested uh, more than uh, more than thirty in a day. So, uh, because some of the facility, because of the high number of sample that is going there, there's need for us to increase the, uh, the working hour in those facility by making sure that people run uh, almost 24 hours uh, shifts in, that, in those facilities. So, those such kind of facility, we have facilities that run more than 35 per day, but on the average, let's say 20 per day, Yes, the, 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 and all the machine we had in Nigeria, we have in Nigeria is actually a, a duo, which is the one that has a two bay. 
like just like two module machine, uh, but the the chip uh, where the chip is put is called bay. So we can run a, a, an average of twenty per day with the machine, uh, except for the one unit that was donated to us outside uh, new tools. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So maybe I will take a question from online. Um, I thank uh, the attendants uh, because, I mean, they've remained online and they've been very active asking many questions. But one which has come up, which is quite interesting, is about uh, biosafety requirement, because you have many steps. It's not just one time you put it in the machine and, and you get the results. So uh, maybe um, if this could be addressed also by the colleagues from Nigeria online, this time maybe KNCV, do you have some insight with regards to that? Okay, so thank you very much for the question. Um, so we, we actually have um, some guidelines and specifications for biosafety um, to ensure that um, used cartridges or ships are decontaminated properly. Uh, before incineration. So we have a um, national guideline that we follow. We have appropriate solvent and concentration for that. And we train during the training, the, use, the end users training, they were trained properly on that. And um, even during our, our mentoring uh, programs, the super, supportive supervision, we make sure that they are adhering to that. So we decontaminate before we, we dispose of that of the used cartridges and the um, solvents used for testing. Thank you, Anova. Much. Um, I have a question of my own, as I don't see ends up in the audience, aha, but still I have a question. So let me go ahead and then I will end over. My question is to uh, Dr. Phoebe, maybe, uh, just maybe if you can provide some insight, you know, because we, we have talked, uh, the colleague, uh, Mr. Tanaka explained their choice, you know, we put the, the mold bio machine where there was no gene expert. So maybe some insight as to um, what advantage is there to have many uh, molecular testing equipment? Um, what impact can this have you know, uh, at country level, at programmatic level for expanding access to molecular diagnosis? Thank, thank you very much for that question. Uh, the advantage of having different platforms in a country or in a TB diagnostic network is that we leverage on the advantages that each platform has in relation to the different types of labs that we have in a system. For example, the TrueNet platform can is portable and can be used, it's used based on a battery that can be recharged. This means that it is an advantage that it can be put in peripheral sites, which have limited access to electricity. So this means that the peripheral sites can have a platform that suits them, and also that requires minimal infrastructure requirements. Also, the advantage of having different platforms in a TB diagnostic network is that, for example, we know that during the COVID pandemic, there were stockouts in different uh, reagents for different tests. So if there are different platforms, there are advantages that if there is a stockout in one platform, the country can shift to another platform, and then the lab can continue serving its customers and offering quality TB testing, even in the presence of shortages on one platforms. So that's the advantage that the TrueNet platform is brought to countries in that we can leverage on the different advantages of the different platforms and that we can continue offering quality services to our clients. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I think for TB program manager, this is really important to have that flexibility and that choice also for the, the heads of, of National TB Lab. We are all faced, we've been faced with, uh, um, and it's been mentioned during the working session, that issue of supply, continuity of supply, at least when you have a backup platform that you can use, you can have that a little bit more flexibility with regards to that. So there was some questions that were, so we'll start here and then the second question, please. Thank you. Please introduce yourself and okay. just indicate to whom the question is being addressed. Thank you. Okay, Sylvia Thank Kadima you. from Kenya. Um, I think there was a presenter called Lucy and uh, the lady has just alluded to my question as well. 
uh, in the case where uh, you talked about community testing or field testing, who actually does this test? Going back to the earlier discussions of the day on task shifting. So who actually does the tests when you talk about field testing or community testing with the TrueNet? Thank you. Okay, so maybe we can direct that question maybe to uh, the country representative. Does someone want to take that question? Who is testing at community yeah. level? And have you used that approach? And maybe I will direct my question directly to uh, the Nigeria team because I, I, I think you've experimented that and you have some insight. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't know if I can go, please. Hello, can I go? This is Nkiru from Ken City. Please go ahead, please go ahead. Okay, so I, I really want to share our experience because we have used the TrueNAT in a portable fashion in country. Um, our first outing was the use of TrueNAT and portable digital history for active case finding during the World TB Day. Um, we were able to uh, test TB uh, samples identified after screening with PDS. And it was actually an uh, awesome experience and we were able to do same day testing. You know, it's available of the, of the opportunity of having a same day testing for, for samples generated. But currently KNCV in collaboration with NTP, um, we introduced what we call our winners on KK, work for short, WOK. So winners on KK is a minivan that is used in an integrated fashion uh, for COVID-19 vaccination and TB active case finding. Uh, we actually leverage on COVID-19 vaccination program to get more persons for TB screening and testing. Uh, we utilize the advantage of the small size of the minivan to navigate our way through the communities with bad terrains. So what we do is to go as a team, um, team of COVID-19 vaccinators, TrueNAT operator is also there. We also have the PDS operator. So in the communities, persons are usually fascinated by the colorful minivan. It draws persons to the testing field. The, uh, the team also goes with music and jingles, and that also attracts persons to this course. And because uh, COVID-19 vaccination and the BP check is free and are done in the, on, the, on the spot, more persons are drawn to the winners on Keke. The PDS operator screens clients for TB, identify presumptives, and they are tested there and then with the, true, the portable TrueNAT uh, instrument by the TrueNAT operator. It is actually an exciting and awesome experience for us. And it avails us, as I said before, an opportunity of same day testing. Thank you, Anova. Thank you. Maybe just quickly, who was testing? Was this still lab uh, professional or uh, a community uh, healthcare worker? So we have, we have a lab person attached to the team. The lab person takes care of the TrueNAT operations. Mm. Um, yeah, thank you very much. So one question here, please go ahead. Thank you. Yes, I'm called Moses Supercharger, the Asylum Patient Ambassador. Uh, I have two quick questions. First of all, uh, uh, allow me to appreciate uh, the organizers for, for a beautiful uh, gender balance of the panel. <laughs> I can see four beautiful ladies and four uh, <laughs> powerful men. <laughs> so it's well balanced. And um, uh, my concern is around, uh, somebody said they are this coding the, 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 the samples with 0 0.5 sodium. Is this a guideline? And is there a problem if my country decides to use 0 0.2? when discording the samples. Do we have guidelines to guide you people to dispose these samples? And um, another one, what criteria did you say use to choose the three countries in this pilot uh, study of TNT? Was it the high incidence of TB or they just chose the countries? Thank you. Thank you very much. And also for appreciating the gender balance, though there are many women's online as well. 
<laughs> so I'm not sure it's <laughs> balanced. Um, yeah, maybe we will direct that question to uh, Lucy, please. Could you address so the choice criteria for choosing the countries? And then uh, the, the one about the volume um, and, and just to link up with what uh, Chad also was presenting about the XDR cartridge and that need for uh, maybe further adapting uh, based on, on data from the field and challenges on the field. So over to you, please. Uh, uh, thanks, Marguerite. Uh, the choice was guided by the high priority USAID countries. And in terms of the decontamination, I think countries uh, follow their waste management practices. Others use 0.5% bleach. Uh, and I think countries uh, develop those guidelines uh, themselves. And uh, maybe we can hear from perhaps can Kenya. I, can we assume to leave the premises? The Lucy, please. Oh, no, so I was, I was saying in terms of the decontamination of the cartridges, uh, countries have their own waste management guidelines, but I think most of them are using 0.5% sodium hypochlorite, but it, it all depends on, on how they define uh, the concentration in their waste management guidelines. So perhaps countries can share their experiences. I know Nigeria has already said they're using the 0.5%. I don't know if other countries are using something different, perhaps maybe the Zimbabwe team could add on to that discussion. So from the country representative, any one of you doing different from, no? No, okay. Maybe what, what I would uh, like to, to maybe underline is that um, as South Africa is demonstrating, so um, the importance of implementation studies is really implementation trial is that that is really what is uh, where this lies because you not lying as in this is where it stands um, because then you can produce more data as you're introducing the test and, and see and, and, and in advance you can have those data to inform the national guidance and this gives you more um, uh, adaptability to, to really contextualize the guidance or the other way around to feed into the elaboration of the global uh, global guidance in the case of XDR because this is still uh, being elaborated. So I hope the answer is clear. Yeah. So we have an interesting question online, and I will maybe direct that to uh, switching to French now. Dr. Haloni, on a une question qui est venue uh, de l'audience qui est en ligne, et je pense je m'adresse à la RDC parce que um, je sais que la RDC a vraiment malheureusement fait face à de nombreuses endémies et de nombreuses euh, flambées épidémiques et que vous avez vraiment euh, euh, l'expérience de combiner des plateformes, plusieurs tests sur une même plateforme euh, moléculaire. Donc, est-ce que il euh, y a des, des, des initiatives dans ce sens et normalement, euh, spécifiquement en ce qui concerne euh, TrueNAT, est-ce que vous envisagez peut-être euh, de d'explorer de, de, plus avant la possibilité donc d'intégrer plusieurs tests sur une même euh, sur un même équipement euh, voilà donc c'est ma question merci beaucoup merci Marguerite euh, oui en RDC vu qu'on a plusieurs euh, épidémies pathologies nous, nous, nous intégrons le système des plateformes multi disease déjà avec le gene expert donc, euh, c'est intégré pour la COVID, les monkeypox. Donc, euh, on fait, il y a l'hépatite, Ebola aussi. Donc, euh, c'est intégré. Avec euh, TrueNet, c'est vrai qu'on va peut-être y penser. Non, mais pour le moment, comme c'est la phase pilote, donc on ne fait que TB, mais dans les directives déjà du, du programme de lutte contre la tuberculose, donc euh, COVID et TB, si la plateforme utilise peut le faire, donc ça se fera avec euh, la machine qui est sur le site. Merci. Bon, merci beaucoup, docteur Aloni. Et donc, vraiment, euh, produire ces données préliminaires euh, pour guider aussi euh, euh, les directives et l'adoption euh, au niveau euh, mondial euh, de, de pouvoir faire plus de tests sur ces différents équipements euh, lorsqu'ils sont mis à l'échelle et déployés dans les pays. Euh, je pense que nous allons nous arrêter là, sauf so, s'il y a une dernière question vraiment. There was a question for the from the colleague at the front here, the lady with. The... 
<laughs> you had a question for the colleague from TB Cup. Is it still on? Uh, do you want to go ahead and ask? So this will be our last question because we're running very late. And uh, yeah, please go ahead with your question. The microphone, please. Thank you. Yeah. Set. Yes. Okay. Uh, it seems like EPTB diagnosis is 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 seems to be a very much of a less discussed area um, with some of these diagnostics. So it would be very interesting to know if the researchers are exploring this area and uh, if there's any awareness of the new uh, diagnostic tests like the, the ERISA TB test for extrapulmonary TB that's been developed at UCT, if there's you know, any awareness of, of those new diagnostics that are coming down the line and, and how EPTB is being looked at with these new tools that are being implemented. Okay, thank you. So extrapulmonary TB is what we're talking about. Correct. Yes. Okay, so who wants to take among the two of you? Yeah, for us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, for us in Nigeria, we have a clear direction in terms of policy on the use of new tools for EPTB. It's already happening with expert MTB RIF assay. Yeah, so we have that policy and we're doing that. And for the past several years, we have data to show that Nigeria have experience using the expert for EPTB. Therefore, others, um, I'm not sure, yeah, whether we, I think others can contribute, but for us, for now, we're, look, we're looking at the expert for ETV sample testing. So we have a policy on that, thank you. Okay, so maybe from the other hand of the continuum from the <laughs> research side. <clears throat> Um, I think um, with extra pulmonary samples, um, um, the, I think the, the problem is often the, the lack of a reference standard testing and the difficulty um, in um, uh, 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 obtaining samples um, and, the, and, and the fact that there are fewer patients presenting with a wide variety of different kinds of samples. So it's not a homogenous thing. You've got, um, um, uh, you've got men TB meningitis, you've got plural, plural TB, um, you've got lymphadenitis. Um, and I think uh, in terms of extra pulmonary TB, there's um, now a lot of focus on um, urine diagnostics, urine-based diagnostics, LAM, um, and um, I'm aware of the ERISA study. I, 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 I'm not 100% sure of what the, the, the results were. Um, or if I'm allowed to mention them, um, but uh, yeah, I think um, you know there's, there's this certain like um, you know the volume of the sample, the concentration of the sample, standardization, um, and um, yeah, the, the the lack of um, the heterogeneity in, in extra pulmonary TB. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just to add. Yeah, based on the point he raised, for us, depending on the type of extra pulmonary sample. So we'll classify them to which level of laboratory that will be acid because uh, in some instances, there's high level of manipulation. So there are issues around biosafety. And in such cases, they're also done at the reference laboratories. So we'll have classification depending on the type of sample and which level of the network uh, we can assay the extra primary sample. So that is also uh, something I needed to point out. Thank you. Thank you. So we have, you know, all consideration to be taken yeah, into maybe, account. Maybe Both. I can also add yes. for Zimbabwe. Yeah. For these new technologies, what we, we are doing, we use the holistic approach of, of adopting those WRDs and uh, we have adopted the, uh, almost 90% of those ones. You look at the LPA now, we also have the XDR technology uh, in our site as, as a pilot. And for EPT, e, e, extra pulmonary, we are looking also at the TB LAM in HIV, advanced HIV disease in terms of diagnosis of TB. Okay, thank you. So a very last question because I need to be fair and we have a question in French. So we will take the very, very last question. Please go ahead. Uh, merci. Je suis uh, Benga Rogenina du programme uh, Tuberculose uh, Gabon. Ma question est en lien avec le, le rendu des résultats. Euh, dans la présentation de la RDC, si j'ai bien compris, les, les appareils TrueNAT euh, euh, sont utilisés avec des imprimantes 
pour, pour, pour le rendu des résultats. Moi, je, et, et, et dans la présentation, il a été dit qu'ils qu ont rencontré des difficultés avec ces imprimantes-là qui sont tombées en panne. Il y a eu, je pense que le Nigérian en a parlé également. Moi, j'aimerais savoir, dans ce genre de situation, qu'est-ce qui a été fait pour, pour voilà, résoudre ce problème de, de rendu de résultats avec les imprimantes en panne. Merci. Docteur Aloni euh, oui, Marguerite. Donc, quelle oui. solution face au problème d'imprimante? Oui, bon, lorsque l'imprimante est en panne, normalement, la machine Trunat, lorsque l'on a techniqué, les résultats apparaissent aussi comme le Gene Expert. Hein? Donc, il y a un écran avec euh, les résultats de l'échantillon. Donc, euh, à ce moment-là, on recopie parce qu'on a un bon de rendu des résultats aussi adapté avec euh, Trunat. Donc, nous récopions les résultats euh, au niveau du banc et on rend les résultats lorsque l'imprimante est en panne ou pose problème. Merci beaucoup, Dr. Aloni. So, that is raising the point that, you know, information technology can help us, but when it's failing us, it's back to paper and pen. This is not failing, it's always there. So, on that, I want, I think we need to, a, a big round of applause for our uh, exceptional panel. Also acknowledging the panelists online because we're finishing, I think one hour later, they remain online. So please a round of applause for them as well. Thank you also for the participant. We see you, we've seen you, and uh, we, we thank you for really being there uh, and, and, and also to listen to the voice from the country and also, you know, what is coming ahead. So we had that chance to get those early results from the TBCAP consortium. Uh, so that being said, uh, a, a last round of applause for ourselves because all the people in the room here who remain uh, really uh, very interested. So that is the last round for all of us. 